Okay guys, so in my last couple of videos on sighting, which I introduced to you before doing the perspective videos, so we're gonna kind of backtrack a little bit. One of the things that I said you can do is you can use sighting when drawing from a photograph. Now, I put this off a little bit because I think it's really important that you start to understand the depth of something and how it translates to the page, which is flat. <clears throat> However, realistically, most of us aren't going to spend several days or a month sitting outside someplace drawing something, and that's usually what it's going to take in order to get a nice rendered, fully shaded drawing in is a lot of time. So it's more practical when you're on vacation or when you're walking around to take a photograph of something that you know that you want to draw and then bring it into the studio and use sighting in order to get your proportions to look accurate. So remember, proportions are a relationship between sizes. A nice way to think of it is like proportions. I always say to my little kids' students, what's your favorite food? And they'll say something like pizza or spaghetti or ice cream. And I can always ask a student, <clears throat> if you and your brother or you and your sister were getting ice cream, would you be able to tell by looking at the bowl of ice cream if he got more than you and they always say of course i could tell so we already take these visual assessments of things and we use them in our practical daily life all the time now we're going to do that and take a visual assessment and measurement from a photograph and then we're going to create the same relationship of sizes on our drawing so <clears throat> let's take a look at this example and um, hopefully it's going to make this process a little bit easier for you. Um, so what I've done is I've put this in one of my contact sheets, the sheet protectors, so that I could draw with a sharpie on top. And you can see that I have some almost vertical lines. They aren't perfectly vertical, they're slight angles. <clears throat> and now in the drawing that I've done, I've replicated as closely as I could just from looking this line, this line, this line and this line. And now I'm going to use this structure and my sighting dowel to be able to compare the relationships between sizes here. And then I'm going to compare the same relationships here. So let's take a look. The first thing I did was I compared this width. Now, one of the things that's really important is that <coughs> you want this width to be taken horizontally. You don't want to go diagonally along with the siding that you see that's on a perspective. And that's because these angles are not the same perspective. So if you go to measure it like this, it's going to be a, an inaccurate measure measurement. So I'm going to take a horizontal measurement here. Let's do it a little lower, closer to the garage. And so that's my width. And then I'm going to count to see how many of these fit into the front of the garage. That's two two and about two-thirds of one. So I want to create the same relationship here. So I'm going to measure the width. Again, I want to go right about where the height of the garage was, so where I measured it on the other one. There's one. I'm using my pencil in my wrong hand, or somebody told me that I shouldn't call it my wrong hand. It's the wrong hand for me. That doesn't mean it's the wrong hand for you. And it's just because this is my not dominant hand. I'm right-handed. I'm dominant in this hand. So I'm using my opposite hand here. So I want one, two. I'm going to use my non-dominant hand over here. <clears throat> That's two. And I want this to be about two-thirds. And that looks accurate. So now I'm going to take the other measurements that I have, and I'm going to check them against each other so that I can make more additions. So one of the things I want to check is the width of this side of the garage. Now, in theory, if this were facing directly towards us, this width and this width would be equal, but that's slanting slightly away from me. So I can tell that this width is narrower than this one is. and. I want to create sort of a relationship in my mind. So it looks like it's one and just under a half. So I want this relationship to be about the same. Let's see where I ended it. I want to end it just a little bit less than I had there. So let's see if that's still one and just under a half. <clears throat> it looks a little bit closer to one and a half there. 
again, I take these measurements with a grain of salt. So if I go <coughs> directly to my drawing and try to measure that, you can see that I've drawn this at a larger scale. So I need to now increase my measurement here. And then I want this to be about one and a half. And that's just under a half, so that seems accurate. <coughs> now I can be free to draw in these angles. And hopefully they're going to be close to correct. And I might have to do some corrections of those, but we'll take a look at that later. I want to show you again now that I've corrected these widths, I have to correct the width of the garage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure similar measurements. So I'm going to measure the width of the garage here. And I'm going to compare it to the height. So I can see that the width is slightly longer than the height. And I want to do that same measurement here, which actually happens to be very similar. I didn't have to adjust my hand at all. And when I change and look at the height, that's the same. I remember when I was looking at the width. Where was I here? Compared to the height, the width is supposed to be longer. Here, mine are almost exactly the same. So that tells me that I probably need to widen this or I need to shorten this. Now, I haven't taken any measurements of my height, but my sense is already that I need to widen this. So that's pretty easily done. I can extend this line that I already have. <coughs> and I'm looking at the gap here. It looks like it's approximately this long of a gap. Again, I'm just guessing. And then I can take a sighting measurement to see if that's accurate. And then I'm going to erase my helper lines and see if that looks closer. Let's erase all of the helper lines and draw in the width that I was missing. <coughs> OK, so again, this is just a guess. And I'm hoping that I guessed more accurately here. I'm going to take a horizontal measurement and then see how it is in relationship to the vertical. And that looks more accurate to me. Looks like it could even get just slightly wider, or this could get slightly shorter. I'm going to wait and measure these compared to one another to see if I need this to get shorter or taller. So those are some examples. I could spend all day here doing the rest of them, of course, with sighting <coughs> and structural line and using sighting from a photograph. It's still going to take a lot of your time. However, it's going to get you, with a framework of a drawing, some guidelines that are going to be much more accurate. And I think you'll find that it's worth the time in the end. Thank you all so much for watching. More videos are coming soon, so if you wish to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and do that. And also you can check out my website, lzmstudio.com.